Welcome everyone to section number four. This is double integrals in a polar form. So right, we learned all about these things, polar coordinates back in our calc two days. Now we would like to be able to integrate with these things, right? Integrate over regions in polar coordinates. So we need to remember, right, back from our calc two days, we had some nice definitions, right? So we had right, polar, we had r's, and we had thetas, right? So r squared, right, we had an equation for this, and that said that it was x squared plus y squared. So this is the first thing that I need you to remember. The next thing is that x, right, x was equal to this r cosine of theta, and y, y was equal to r sine of theta. And this really just comes from a single picture over here, right? So if I have a point over here and it has a specific, you know, maybe it's x comma y, that means I moved over x, right? So that this is x right here and I moved up y. So maybe I'll use purple and moved up y. And so if I wanted to represent this, right? And I wanted to figure out, okay, what is the r value Right? What is the radius kind of away from the origin that this point is? Well, this is where you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, right? X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, right? So this is just the Pythagorean theorem. And better yet, if you introduce this angle theta right here, right, theta, well, then we use maybe the definition of cosine, right? So cosine of theta is supposed to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So X over R, we can go ahead and rearrange this and we get X equals R r cosine theta. Likewise, if we wrote down our equation for sine, right? The sine of theta is equal to, uh, well, opposite over hypotenuse. So this is y divided by r. Rearrange a little bit, we can solve for y. y is equal to r sine of theta. So this is the picture right here. This is kind of where we get all of our definitions for r and for theta, right? r squared, all that sort of stuff. So these are some nice equations that we need to remember. Okay. Now, I would like to, again, my goal is to be able to integrate in polar coordinates. So I have this nice uh, integral right here. It has Cartesian coordinates, right? We have x's and y's, and the claim is, I'd like you to think about how hard it would be to integrate uh, this function right here. So, I mean, you can think about u substitution, you can think about integration by parts, uh, you can think about, I don't know, trig sub, uh, anything you throw at this, right? If you pause the video, you can try for hours and hours and hours, and it turns out that this is a very hard thing to integrate uh, in Cartesian coordinates. But the claim is, right, we can actually integrate this thing in polar coordinates. So I'd like to integrate this where r is this region down here, right? So it starts at x equals zero and goes to x equals root uh, four minus y squared. So it's part, it's like a semicircle here, semicircle of radius two. Okay, so if I want to go ahead and integrate this in polar coordinates, well, let's go ahead and start switching some stuff up really quick. So notice, first of all, I have this negative x squared minus y squared. If you factor out that negative, well, that becomes x squared plus y squared, right? Negative times the quantity x squared plus y squared. So that's just going to be minus r squared. And now I'm going to integrate, you know, it with r's and with theta. So this is going to be dr d theta. And the last thing is really our bounds of integration, right? Uh, what do we integrate to and from? And so if I integrate maybe with respect to r first and then with respect to theta, I'm gonna go ahead and spread these out a little bit. Well, now you have to imagine with the r's, right? You're kind of starting at r equals zero. That's the smallest r value. And you're moving your way out, right? So you're moving your way out. So kind of at r equals zero, we're already in the region and we seem to exit at radius two. No matter which angle we turn, right, it always seems to be at radius two that we're exiting out of the circle. So this is gonna be from zero to two. And again, kind of radiuses, right, they start at the origin, that's r equals zero, and they work their way out. Okay, well what theta values do I care about? Well, certainly theta equals zero, maybe all the way up to pi over two, right, at 90 degrees. So at pi over two, that's when you really stop but I need to even go like smaller than zero, right? Actually negative pi over two. So if I did negative pi over two to positive pi over two, that would be the setup. Okay, and as it turns out, and kind of the second half of this video is gonna be me explaining this, right? As it turns out, when you switch to polar coordinates, 
you need this extra thing, this integration factor. It turns out there's a fancier term, it's called a Jacobian. But you need an R here. So this is gonna be your function, but then you have this extra R, right? So, and you multiply it by this here. So you're gonna have this R, and again, I will explain that here in just a second. But for the time being, take my word for it, and now go ahead and let's evaluate this out. So again, I would pause the video now, try to evaluate this out, and then I'll spoil the surprise. All right, so let me talk it through for us here. So maybe the first thing that I would like to do, I noticed that all of these things, they just have R's in them, right? Uh, and so actually back, I'd like to think, and you can look back in your notes, theorem 2.5 in our notes told us that we're allowed to split this up, that I can make this the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of one d theta, and then multiply that by the integral from zero to two of all of our R stuff, right? So this is good. Let me go ahead and rearrange this. I'm gonna do R e to the negative R squared dr. And this just kind of saves some steps sometimes, right? So I'm gonna integrate both of these things. So when I integrate one with respect to theta, that's just gonna give me theta. And now I'd like to evaluate from pi over two to negative pi over two. Okay, now let's try to integrate this one. Well, with this extra r here, this comes in very useful. I'm gonna go ahead and use u substitution, where u is equal to negative r squared. So therefore, du is gonna be equal to negative two r dr. And I'm gonna go ahead and trade in, right? I see this r dr, I have an r dr sort of deal. So I'm gonna trade this in for du over negative two. Let's go ahead and do that here. So this is gonna be e to the u, and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, trade that in R dr for du over negative two, right? So basically I'm just dividing by negative two here. That's why I have du over negative two. And the last thing is that if I'm integrating with respect to u now, right, these zero and two, right, these are R values. I would like u values. So if my R value was zero, right, if I plug that in everywhere I see an R here, I get out the u value zero. So, okay, that's zero there. Now, what about if I plug in the R value two? So if I plug in the R value two, I get, let's see, two squared, that's gonna be four, but with that negative, I get negative four. So that's gonna be from zero to negative four. So now that those are U values. Okay, now let's go ahead and evaluate the next step here. If I plug in pi over two everywhere I see a theta, I'm gonna get pi over two and then I subtract away and I plug in negative pi over two. So that's gonna be really adding another pi over two. I can integrate this and let's see, I'm gonna get this negative one half e to the u. Oops, that's a horrible e. There we go, e to the u evaluating from zero to negative four. So finishing up this one, I get pi and now evaluating here, let's see, I have negative one half and if I was to plug in negative four I would get out e to the negative four. And then if I was to plug in zero, right, I need to subtract this away. So e to the zero is just one. Okay, so that could be my final answer. I like to go ahead and simplify a little bit, right? So I'm gonna do pi over two. I'm gonna group this one half with a pi and let me distribute this negative. So this is gonna be one minus e to the negative four. And this right here is a positive answer and that is my final answer. So not a very beautiful answer, but it is what it is. We were able to evaluate it. We got a final answer and notice, right? So this is a nice positive number. It is the volume of this function over this region right here, right? So it's a surface that's hovering above this region. It's the volume of that structure uh, that would be under it. Okay, so hopefully you see now the use of polar coordinates, right? Before it'd be very, very difficult to do this, but really this extra R, it comes in and it saves the day. So the question is, why does that R exist, right? Why do I need that R? And that's what the second half of this video is going to be about. And so unfortunately, right, in order to explain why you need that R, I have to bring us back to the definitions of Riemann sums, right? So when I was talking about these double integrals, right, back in section one here of chapter 15, right, technically these double integrals, right, they are these Riemann sums or limits of Riemann sums, right? And so, okay, it's this function. We have different points, maybe x, k, y, k, in these different little rectangles, right? These sub rectangles maybe. 
and right and you add up lots of volumes of rectangles and you have this the number of rectangles kind of going to infinity sort of deal and that's the actual definition and the big thing here that we have to be interested in is this delta a right delta a is the small area resulting from moving our independent variables right so originally maybe we have delta x and delta y right and so if you want to know what is the area if you move the x's a little bit right so maybe some delta x and some delta y well you get a rectangle right and the area of this rectangle is delta x times delta y, right? You just kind of, you go ahead and you multiply those together. It's length times width. Okay, but the claim is if you switch these things into polar coordinates and you wiggle your polar coordinates, right? Your, your r's and your thetas, your polar uh, variables a little bit, you get a different resulting area, right? So this delta a right here is different. And the claim is, right, this little value right here, this question mark, this thing that we need, this integration factor, this ends up being R. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain to you sort of a proof, not quite a proof, but it's close. So I'm going to give you the ideas. So the first thing, if I have this and I want to switch this into R's and thetas, right? So that's my goal. It's in Cartesian we have with X's and Y's and I'd like polar, I'd like R's and thetas. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, this is the same thing as integrating F of X, Y, D, A. Right, so again, this dx dy, that being equal to dA, well, that's again, we're thinking about kind of, you know, these small rectangles. This is really thanks to Fubini's theorem, right? Next up, if I want to go ahead and switch in my uh, r's and thetas, right, the way that I would technically do this is everywhere I see an x, I would put an r cosine theta, and everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put an r sine theta. So this is just the normal xy substitution into polar coordinates. Now, normally with this function notation, sorry, I forgot my DA right here, but normally with this function notation, kind of the way that it goes is that you specify what are your independent variables. So up here, our independent variables are X's and Y's. Now our independent variables are R's and thetas. So I'm just going to do a notation switch, and this is going to be F of R theta. Just really specifying what are our independent variables. But again, I still have this DA right here. And now this is where we have to use uh, the definition of the integral. So I'm going to use the limit as n goes to infinity of, and we're going to be summing up volumes, right? So from, I use k, I guess, k equals 1 to n of f of r sub k. I don't know why that disappeared, but okay. I guess I'll write it again. There we go. f of r sub k, comma, theta sub k, times this delta a. So again, we're adding up, and these are volumes, right? They're kind of these little uh, rectangular prisms sort of deal. Again, this is the definition of our double integral. And now we need to spend some time, like I said, and calculate out, okay, instead of wiggling x's and y's, right, we're wiggling r's and thetas. And the question is, well, what is the area, you know, with respect to r's and thetas, if you wiggle your r's and your thetas just a little bit? So, okay. Well, here we go. Here's our delta A, and we can kind of maybe first, we should really stare at this and look at the visualization, right? So here we are at this point, R sub K and theta sub K, and if you wiggle your thetas a little bit, right? And if you wiggle your R's a little bit, right? So here's our delta R right here, and our delta theta right here. We want to know what is the area of the sector right here. So it's not just a rectangle anymore, right? Rectangles have really nice area equations, but this thing's, it's more complicated, right? So we need to remember area of a sector here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the area of the large sector minus the area of the small sector. And this part right here, I went ahead and wrote it down for us. This is the part where my eyes start to bleed a little bit, right? It becomes very, very algebraic, this part of the proof, right? Again, we're just trying to calculate out what is this delta A with respect to r's and with respect to thetas. And so let me go ahead and I'm propelling us forward a little bit. This is just kind of expanding things out, again, using the area equation for sectors, right? But okay, let me go ahead and propel us forward a little bit. Notice that this two and this two kind of cancel out, this two and this two kind of cancel out. Again, this is just kind of expanding this stuff. And now notice, we actually have one half delta theta times r sub k squared. And then we subtract away 1 half delta theta times r sub k squared. So these perfectly cancel out. 
Likewise, one half delta theta uh, delta r squared over four, and then we subtract away one half delta theta and delta r squared four. So right, these also perfectly cancel out. The only thing that doesn't perfectly cancel out is well, you have plus here and then you have minus a negative here. So this ends up becoming, well, we'll have two of them and it's one half delta theta and we have r sub k times delta r. Close parentheses, there we go. So again, when we kind of, again, we're just doing algebra here. We expand this all out, this is what we have. Now again, we can see we have a little bit of cancellation. And so we're left with, at the end of the day, let me rearrange this a little bit, r sub k, and I'm gonna do delta r delta theta. And this is what this delta A, this area from wiggling our independent variables a little bit, this is the area formula. And you see it has a delta R and a delta theta, but it also has this R sub K. So if we go ahead and plug that back in, remember we had the limit as N goes to infinity of, and we're summing up from K equals one to N of, and we had F of R sub K theta k, and then before we just had delta a, right? But here, now we have a way to substitute. We have rk and delta r delta theta, close parentheses. There we are. And so now if we use the definition kind of in reverse, right? This is indeed going to be a double integral, and our delta r kind of becomes this dr, and our delta theta kind of becomes this d theta. Our function right here is with regard to r and theta. And now notice we have this extra r quantity right here. So again, this is going to be this r. So that's where, <laughs> that's where that r comes from. I know it's a bit of a pain. But I mean, as soon as we have, right, I, I have to tell you where this R thing comes from, right? It's very unsatisfying if I just say you have to have an R, take my word for it, and I never explain it. So this is the explanation right here. This is why that extra R exists, and we will use this over and over again. We will always be sprinkling this R, dr, d theta, right? We will always be putting this whenever we transfer from Cartesian into polar coordinates. All right, that's it for me. And for this video, I'll see you guys in class. We'll do a lot more examples. See you then.